And yay, the things come out. Ah. And now I think we can see why we've got problems. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, I thought we'd take uh, another look at the case and that aerial issue. And also, I found this thing kicking about, um, if you remember, when we dismantled it. And it actually is supposed to hold the handle on. And I worked out the mechanics of the handle in that this slots into here via the hole in the side. Um, now, on this side, that clearly is broken. And somebody, I didn't notice that before, uh, it's broken and somebody's fixed it by sticking a screw in there. And I thought then I'd have a look and see if we can fix this aerial issue. Because there's, this is where the aerial terminal that we previously had screwed in. And as we saw, that bit of metal went through the case. I'm not sure that was really how it originally was. Um, I think if you expanded the case out a little bit, if you look at the relative positions of this hole here, what I've done is taken the aerial apart and just got the bottom bit of it. Um, then if you look at the relative positions here, I think this would emerge at about the right point. And all I need to do is just expand that out a bit so that this will fit through it. Um, this is always a tricky operation, of course, as you can cause more damage than you would want to. But I think, um, I think we'll have a go at that. Um, and what else is there worth doing? Well, we just give it a good clean while it's apart and there's uh, nothing else on it, I think. So, yes, I made quite a bit of progress on cleaning this up. Um, the remaining spots of paint um, that, well, I mean, the, the, I thought was a spot of paint, but it's actually a very deep scratch, can't do much about that. But the remaining spots of paint, if they didn't yield to fingernails and things, um, came off with um, isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds basically um, a bit of this stuff stick it on cotton bud and uh, go for it um, then I usually spray this anti-static cleaner on as well um, which is is quite good um, the thing with this is you spray it on it foams up and you have to leave it for a while and sort of run it about and it sort of lifts the dirt off um, and then obviously I've already done this once, it's a bit spurious to do it again, but you know, never be too clean, can you? Especially in these um, disease days. Anyway, um, that's cleaned up a bit. And then what I tend to do is use these um, dash wipes that you get from Halfords for your car and um, put those over the top of it and that sort of shines it up a bit. Oh, and of course, what I've got to mention was the aerial. Um, that was the thing I was mainly taking it apart to do, wasn't it? So I made the hole a bit bigger around here, um, put the thing back in um, so that it engages with that hole there. I've got a smaller, better screw that didn't have the head chewed up. Uh, it's not absolutely right because it doesn't completely fit. It was a replacement aerial, not an original, so it'll never go completely flat, but it now has proper extendability and non-droopability, which is what's needed. And it can spin it round and everything. So. It's all right. Obviously, we're going to have to make an electrical connection to that as well when we put the thing back together. Um, but yes, aerial, very important bit, sorted out. So the aerial's glued back together again. Um, sadly, the things here that were supposed to keep it in place on the board have also disintegrated, which is possibly why the aerial got broken in the first place. Um, so I've put a couple of zip ties in there to hold it, which is on the, from the usual Neil school of better than nothing. Um, that's the standards we aim for here. Um, obviously I haven't got the AM aerial um, in at the moment and I haven't got the battery box. I've just put the bench supply on, so I'm going to get the bench supply fired up. And we should be able to see if it's made uh, any improvement on the... Um, on the AM performance, although this is in a bad position for that to be fair. Um, there's a lot of interference here. Um, we're getting something here, not much. So medium wave's still working. I wonder if the uh, long wave now works. Um, Still not getting anything on long wave. 
I suppose disappointing. I mean, obviously the thing being broken was a bad thing, but that doesn't seem to have been the reason why we didn't get a long wave. So here's the circuit, and the business end of where the um, AM stuff comes in is here. Um, you can see there's a the switch here which selects it, and it shows that there are three positions, FM, medium wave, and long wave, and it says here also that it's um, the circuit has been drawn in position FM. Um, which means that these two switches here, one, are closed as they are, but they don't do anything anywhere, don't go anywhere in this case. Um, if you were in medium wave, then these two would be closed, and what that does is takes this part, of, this, is a, this is a ferrite rod here, and the two coils on it, and these coils are taken out when it's in medium wave, and these position two are on. And then when you go to long wave position three, obviously these open up, bringing this into circuit, and also bringing yeah these two capacitors into the circuit so i would hope that it's something relatively replaceable like these capacitors maybe they're short circuit and that's why it's not working and not that this coil is open circuit but we'll just have to see well i had a look and the bad news is uh yes the coil is broken um the these are medium wave coils they're fine the long wave coils are not. The big one here is okay, but then you see at the end of the big ones, the wire comes through and joins onto the little one, and that wire had sort of come off. I've made it worse by pulling it out <laughs> um, just to see where it, where I could possibly fix it, but there isn't really any way to fix it. Um, so it, this coil is open circuit. The chances of getting another one of these that matches that radio is exactly zero, I would say. Um, so... At the worst, it means we can never get long wave on this radio again, and we'll only have medium wave and VHF. But on the other hand, um, there's only about, I reckon, 25 turns on this coil. So I think I've got, there's a possibility that I could rewind it myself. Um, it won't be exactly as neat as this, because um, as I frequently tell a number of websites, I'm not a robot. But I think I can have a go at it, and, and you know, if I don't manage to do it, then we're no worse off than we were before, are we? So I'll come back to you on that one. So there are two ends of this coil. This is the one, the connection that comes out to the to the other. So there's three connections out of them. The coils are common together by this wire here. Um, I need to keep this wire here and not ruin that and somehow preserve it when I remove all this stuff. And then this one is the other end of the coil. It goes around here and this one connects to the bottom end of the coil or doesn't, but it would have done if that thing hadn't come out. So what I'm going to have to do, I think, is cut it here and then start unwinding it. And as I um, so you can just about see there, that's where it joins on. If I cut it here, I can start unwinding this coil and then I can actually count how many turns there are on it and replicate that when I wind it back. So there it is, it's off. I make that about 17 turns. That makes exactly 17 turns of wire. So if I wind another 17 turns of wire back on there and join it up to this thing here, which is, we've still got a bit of wire there. I need to sort of pull that off and rejoin that, I think. Um, yeah, so there's, there's the other end of that coil. I need to possibly put a little splice in there and get that back onto it. It doesn't need to be particularly neat, it just needs to join to the other end of that coil. And then I can join this one here. I probably need to get this section off. Um, and basically rejoin the one end of the coil onto this wire here and another one onto the end of this other coil here. Um, we'll try that out and see what we get. 
Right, well, I've finished my winding. Um, as expected, it does look a bit pants, but um, it works. We now have long wave again. Um, let's try and demonstrate that, although as I said, this isn't a particularly good place for long wave, but I'm sure we can get some. Yep, there we go, we've got long wave. Uh, it wasn't a 100% unqualified success because having got long wave back, I then found after I put it back together that uh, we didn't have FM anymore. And that's a shame because FM was working perfectly until I started mucking about with it. I have no idea what happened there, um, except, well, I have an idea, maybe I shorted something out because one of the transistors, in fact, this one here, had gone open circuit, so I replaced that and that seems to have fixed it. Um, so it's all working now. Uh, I did a quick lineup of it. Um, strictly speaking, you need a frequency generator and all sorts of stuff to line it up. But in practice, if you got the manual, it gives you one to adjust to peak it and one to adjust to um, to tune it in for each wave band. And what you do is just put it to a known station, get the position of the needle right, and um, then basically just go back between one and the other until it's right because they were a little bit out but they're pretty good now i'll demonstrate that in a moment because i have to go into the garden to do that because the reception in here is so bad however it does appear to be all working so i'm going to screw it all back together oh before i do that though i think um what i did also do was um a little bit of wax on here to hold the pointer in place which is um if you just melt that a bit Hopefully that should have just stuck enough to hold it in place now so that it won't move around again. Right, reassembly and test. Slaves took nothing. It may have been a gift. Surprise to him. Then 50 minutes into yeah. the first hour of the show, just say, "Don't give it away." Just said it. The dressing room. Would you like like to predict one? British, West African, African American, and Afro Caribbean now all live together in the same cosmopolitan city. The Akan drum has, in a way, become a typical 21st century Londoner. So there we are, that's the uh, Philips 380. Um, turned out quite a nice set in the end, cleaned up well, aerial fixed, sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it overall. 